Sporting Journal Radio, presented by Onyx. Our next guest spends a lot of time on the water, too, but he's not on lakes. He's spending most of his time on rivers, uh, catching some of the biggest fish in the state of Minnesota. No, we're not talking about walleyes or muskies. We're talking about bigger fish than that. Darren Troseth joins us right now. Darren, how's it going? Pretty good. How about yourself? Not too bad. Thanks for jumping in. I know this was kind of a last-minute interview request, so I appreciate you uh, giving us some time and taking taking time out of your lunch break to uh, to join sure, us today. No problem. I always like to talk fishing. You know, uh, that that episode we filmed for Prairie Sportsman is still one of my I, – I just thought that was a real cool episode. And, it, you know, that fishing for, for those flathead catfish, I think it's – I mean, it's very popular in the state of Minnesota, of course, but it, it's kind of neat, you know, has it has its niche in there. So uh, it, a lot of people don't I don't think uh, understand how much fun that can be and, and just what a great opportunity we have here in the state of Minnesota. It's uh, it's you know, it, I kind of like it to mu- uh, musky fishing almost like, you know, you go out and you uh, you spend a lot of try- time trying to catch that fish. And when you do, you feel like you accomplish something. But I think what kind of rings out is that, you know, spending time in the river is just a different, it's a whole different experience than most people are used to, you know? So even the nights we don't catch fish, we just have a good time, you know, just looking at wildlife and seeing things that happen on the river. Cause the river's a, you know, ever changing. It seems pretty fluid. So, um, but you know, then we'll have times we'll catch, you know, some really nice big fish and it's, uh, I don't know, people seem to like it. And I think they're drawn to it the same reason that I'm drawn to it. So. When you think about the size of those flatheads, I mean, the state record 70 pounds or whatever it is, uh, but to, to be able to go out there and catch a 30-plus a pound fish, you know, have a, a legit chance at a 30-pound 30 30 pound plus fish or even bigger, um, you know, that, that to me just, that's exciting. I don't care what kind of, it could be a carp. When you're reeling in right. something that big, you know, they're just strong, muscular fish. And when you think about, fishing in the river too and fishing with current man that can be uh that can be a pretty wild experience out there darren yeah so just uh i mean just hooking into the fish is one thing you know now we're dealing with uh snags and current and uh you know there's all kinds of different factors that go into getting this fish into the boat so uh, unfortunately we didn't catch a big one the night you were out but uh uh, you kind of got the good idea of it, you know, and uh, it, big fish, they're not like super common, you know, but mm-hmm. there's, like you said, there's obviously a, a good chance of getting a 30 plus pounder and, and a 30 pounder is fairly common actually on the river. So uh, we don't get one every trip, you know, but every few trips or so we probably get into one. Yeah, and that was so funny. We, we fish and we actually fished for a long time that night filming for Prairie Sportsman. And and we were watching a storm as it was coming in. We're like, gosh, we should probably think about getting out of here. And we're like, nah, we're good. We're good. We kept pushing it off, just trying to catch. We, I think we got the one channel or maybe a couple channels. I can't remember, but we were trying to get that flathead. And then finally, you know, like every good fisherman, it's always one more cast if you're, if you're on the lake, but when you're in the river, it's like, all right, leave the lines in the water. We'll, we'll pack everything up well you had the lights turned off we were just getting ready to leave and that's when we finally caught a flathead out there so you just you just never know you just you got to keep your stuff in the water as long as possible when you're out there time on the water that's the uh that's the number one factor in catching a big fish you got to keep those lines in the water and i i find myself getting into uh you know some sometimes a bad situation like oh i'll not want to leave and i forget that the people that i'm with me you know (laughs) they probably have plans or they're gonna leave you know and I'm looking at my watch where, you know, it's not, my trips usually go till midnight, you know, it's like 1230. I'm like, I got to remember, you know, we have to probably get out of here. Most of the time, the people are okay with spending some extra time out there, though, because they understand, you know, we're just, we're just trying to get that big fish. So, you know, it, it was interesting. I don't spend I, I live about three hours west of the Twin Cities. I'm not I, I'm not in the Twin Cities very often. I went to high school there, spent, you know, kind of grew up there a little bit, but we never really fished in the metro. And there's actually some really good fishing opportunities there in the metro. And I, we've been able to film a couple shows for Prairie Sports, but now we just uh, put one out on Facebook on Bidet Makaska there, uh, Lake Calhoun, where we were somebody, I just saw somebody post on Facebook here the other day, somebody caught a real big muskie out of there. So the, the fishing opportunities in the metro are pretty good. And the other river, and I know Dan is with us too. Dan Amundsen is with us too there. Hey, Dan. And Dan fishes uh, the St. Croix. Sorry, I didn't even get, give you a chance to answer there, did I? Hi, Dan. Yeah, that's okay. I'm used to it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Dan, um, 
fishes the St. Croix quite a bit, and we got to learn about your big experience through the ice on the St. Croix on that Prairie Sportsman episode two, where you caught that big sturgeon. That was pretty neat. I, I, as far as uh, opportunities go, I really think that the St. Croix River just has has it all. You know, I mean, it's it's just a truly special fishery, and right next, you know, it's you know within half hour of a major metro area. So, I mean, you got big muskies, big smallmouth, you know, trophy walleyes, and then this sturgeon thing is really exploding. So, it's uh, um, if I was to move somewhere close by, it would definitely be closer to the St. Croix because it's it's a special river. Um, I wanted to have you on too, to talk about current conditions right now. So we can give people some kind of some information because everything is so dry. Uh, levels are, are low everywhere. Uh, what's it like where you fish around the Metro area right now? So I've had to adjust my schedule a little bit in my, the ramps I use. I start off using, I have a ramp close to my house in uh, Jordan that I've been using quite a bit, but, uh, as the waters come down, I've just slowly, you know, move my ramps that I use downstream uh, where the bigger water is. And there's there's some spots further downstream where they actually keep it open, you know, navigable for the uh, the barges. So that makes it a little easier for me. But um, currently it's, you know, it, we're nearing record levels. But the thing is, when you once, once you uh, are near those record levels, you know, things are barely moving right now. It's basically flat line. So it's easy to say, you know, it's super low. We're at record levels. Well, it's probably been this way, you know, several other times. It's just that we're, you know, we're uh, splitting the hairs when we get to this level right now. And, and we probably may never even uh, get to a record level just because there's so many more mun- municipalities and businesses that are, you know, they're dumping water you know, as part of their business back into the river. So I think where we are, it's just going to be flatlined probably for the rest of the year, but it definitely is causing some challenges. You know, people are uh, going off the end of the ramp with their trailers and getting hung up and, and, you know, ripping their tires off and stuff. But um, that's part of the learning experience. I've been there myself. So I think once you learn how to do that, um, you shouldn't have any issues and you just have to be careful. That's all. You can still get around. Yes, it's low, but um, people are pretty reactive to current conditions and, you know, I've seen it before and I, I think we're okay. You know, uh, I fish in a lot of places where you have to worry about reefs or big snags or, you know, gets real busy and you're dealing with other boaters and things like that. It's not very often you have to watch out for a barge. Yeah, <laughs> but that's definitely something you need to watch out for in the areas where fish and and currently, you know, that as this river is getting narrower and narrower, you have to be sure to give them a lot more room. And uh, I'm sure it gets frustrating for those barge operators out there. Um, I ran into a couple sticky situations already this year, you know, where, you know, communication may not have been the best and, uh, you know, we're scrambling to get out of their way, but they got the right of way and you just need to make room for them. So that's one of the things you got to keep your head on a swivel for. Now, are you in the winter time, you switch over and you, you guide for sturgeon on the St. Croix, right in the winter. Do you, do you do some open water sturgeon over there as well? Yeah, actually the open water sturgeon is actually almost more popular than the catfishing thing yeah. I'm doing. So starting oh, really? okay. September, I'll go through sem- September right up through ice up. You know, I, I usually try to schedule through mid November, but you know, if we can go through December, I'll, I'll still take my boat out there if it's possible. You know, I'm set up where I have a canopy and a heater. And as long as we can get the boat out there, the fish are going to be biting. So, um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's as far as I know, I think I have one date left available for the rest of the year. So it's pretty popular. <laughs> All right. Well, I was going to have you plug the business. I mean, obviously we'll still plug it, but you don't need to. Uh, how big was that sturgeon? That that was a catch and, new catch and release record, right? Yeah, the, the sturgeon I caught through the ice was 78 inches, so that's the current uh, catch and release record, and uh, the estimated weight was 120 pounds, you know, give or take, you know, 10% or whatever, but um, I, I I keep telling people I expect that thing to get beaten, you know, here in the next year or two. I mean, especially these fish up uh, on um, the Rainy River just keep getting bigger and bigger, and we've seen a lot of big fish come out of the Rainy River this spring. Uh, some of which probably surpass the weight of the one that I caught. So just a matter of time, you know. <laughs> that was going to be my next question is how long do you think that record would stand? Uh, I, yeah, I would say probably probably a year or two is my mm-hmm. guess. You know, it, in fact, the fish I caught, I, I think it might have been caught even a couple times, you know, oh. this past year. Or so that fish is eventually going to get bigger, too. So I'm just kind of riding out the wave here while I can, but it's going to get beat. 
sooner well, or later. It, it's kind of a neat story about the sturgeon of Minnesota. And, and when you talk about the big fish that are getting caught right now and how you, you wouldn't be surprised if your record gets broken, because your, your fish was huge. And to think that that could get broken, you know, m- maybe a handful of times in the next few years, uh, it's really a testament to the, the recovery efforts that have gone on with that fish. Oh, absolutely. The DNR has done a really good job with bringing these fish back and they're putting them different parts of the state too. And it's going to give more and more people an opportunity to, to experience these fish. And I, I think they're the perfect sport fish, to be honest with you. I mean, it's, they, they take well to catch and release. They get large, you know, they do battle, they jump out of the water. It's just, that it's, they're really easy to fish. It, it, to me, it's the best sport fish in the state. They're so they're so cool because they're so old. I mean, it, it's literally like catching a dinosaur. But the fact when you talk about them jumping out of the water like that, it like we were up on Lake of the Woods here a couple of weeks ago fishing, and I was in my boat. I think with my dad, and then we had a couple other. I think Dan and your dad were in the boat not far away from us, maybe like thirty yards away from us, something like that. You guys are both hooked mm-hmm. up with fish. Both the rods are bent over each side of the boat, and we're kind of watching. And in the middle of it, we see a sturgeon jump in between the two boats, like a, like a big sturgeon. So we thought <laughs> maybe one. that they'd hooked into a, a big sturgeon. But no, it was a couple of big, actually a couple of really nice walleyes, wasn't it? Yeah, they were decent. Mine was, uh, I'll admit, mine was smaller. But yeah, that was a uh, wonderful chaos, I like to call that yeah. moment, with a couple of walleyes and big sturgeon in between. It's so cool. It, so neat. It was really cool. All right, Darren, we'll let you get back. Uh, Three Rivers Fishing Adventures is uh, the guide business. How can people reach you? Uh, they can check out my website, three rivers, fishing adventures.com. I got a Facebook page and, uh, my phone number six, one, two, two, four, seven, one, five, seven, nine. I don't have many dates left available this year, but you can go ahead and check it out. Uh, I'm sure next year will be wide open pretty soon. Very good. Darren Trosa. Thanks for the time today on the show. Thanks guys. Take care. On X hunt. Ever heard of it? Next time you see that guy at your local shop who always punches his tag on a stud whitetail, ask him. He'll tell you about the most trusted source for mapping, with nationwide landowner names, private and public land boundaries, including walk-in areas, map tools to mark spots, and the ability to view your maps without cell service. And that's just scratching the surface. It's your time to be known as the big buck guy around town. Download the leader in hunt mapping on Google Play or the App Store. On X Hunt, know where you stand. Hear more at sportingjournalradio.com or wherever you get podcasts.